welcome to the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research Incorporated. This is a school and is not a church, and neither are we affiliated to any religious or scientific organization. This school was founded based on the divine vision and revelation that was given to Dr. Henry Kapakini in the state of Ohio in the year 1931, who later went on to set up branch schools. Our local school is held here in Port of Spain, Trinidad, and our school dean is Dr. Paul Walters. In this school, we preach and we teach using the true, correct, and original name for the Heavenly Father, which is Yahweh, the Word of Son, which is Elohim, and the name of the Holy Spirit, which is Yahshua, as contained in the original Hebrew manuscript. When Bible translators came across the true, correct, and original name, for the Heavenly Father, which is Yahweh, they roughly gave us the common title of God. When they came across the true and divine, pluralistic title, for the Word of Son, which is Elohim, they roughly gave us the common title of God. And when they came across the true divine name for the Holy Spirit, which is Yahshua, whether manifested in or out of the physical body, they gave us the pagan trilogy of Jesus Christ. Lord and Lord, their titles are not names. The Apostle Paul, the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5, which states, For though there be that are four words, spelled in this, for whether these words are in heaven or not, for there are words many and words many. In Greek mythology, in Greek mythology there are many gods. You have such gods as Hercules, the god of strength, Venus, the god of love, Neptune, the sea god. Hercules, Venus, and Neptune are their names. God is a title given among them. Lord is also a title. In England, you have a place called the House of Lords. And at the House of Lords, you have such lords as Lord Baltimore, Lord Snowden, and Lord Justin Table, to name a few. Baltimore, Solon, and Chesterfield are their names. Lord is a title added on to them by the monarch of the by the monarch of England. So each lord must have a name, and each lord must have a name also. So the question one should ask oneself, what is the name of the heavenly father? Saying that Lord and Lord, their titles are not names. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous or a name. A minor investigation on your part into a good or a rich dictionary or encyclopedia, and you will come across these facts for yourself. There is no J in the Hebrew alphabet. Neither is there a letter J in the Greek alphabet, the Russian alphabet, the German alphabet, nor the Latin alphabet at the time of the Messiah. A further investigation into the letter J will reveal that the letter J came into the world for the first time in the 17th century. That makes the letter J some three to four hundred years in its total existence on the face of the earth. So such names as Jesus, Jehovah, John, and Joshua are impossible renderings of those divine names. And the letter J was originally the letter I. So in the name Jesus, J-E is originally I-E. When pronounced, it is pronounced E or A, which is a Babylonian God. The part S-U-S comes from Z-E-U-S, Zeus, the supreme god of the Greeks. And the title Christ comes from Krishna, the Hindu son idol god. So right into the name of Jesus and the title Christ, we have three different gods of three different nationalities, Babylonian, Greek, and Hindu. The true, correct, and original name for the heavenly God is Yahweh. The name Yahweh comes from the original Hebrew tetragrammaton. Tetra meaning four, and grammaton representing these four characters or symbols in Hebrew, which are Yah, He, Bob, He. The Hebrew language is a consonantal language, in that they do not use the either vowels in writing their letters. But as represented here by these four characters, this is pronounced Yahweh by the Hebrew speaking people. The Hebrew language is read from right to left. English is read from left to right. When transliterated letter for letter, sound for sound, symbol for symbol, this is a Y, this is an H, this is a W, and this is an H. In order to make the Hebrew tetragrammaton pronounceable Yahweh in English, as it is pronounced Yahweh by the Hebrew speaking people, 
we as English speaking people, we need the aid of our vowels to make our words pronounceable. And the vowels that A, E, I, O, U, and sometimes Y take the place of I. In order to make the Hebrew touch grammar pronounceable in English, we will show to go to the first manhata that was drawn out from Virgin Motherland, taking the only vowel in his name, which is A, placing it between the Y and the H to make pronounceable Yah, the masculine portion of the Heavenly Father's name. We will also show to go to the first woman E that was drawn out of the manhata, taking the only vowel in her name, which is E, placing it between the W and the H. To make pronounceable way, the feminine portion of the Heavenly Father's name. Our Heavenly Father, whose true, correct, and original name is Yahweh, is both male and female in principle, right unto himself. And we being his offsprings, we do testify that this is true. For right unto our physical bodies, whether we be man or woman, we have both androgen and estrogen in us. In a male, there is a greater percentage of androgen and a smaller percentage of estrogen. In a female, there is a greater percentage of estrogen and a smaller percentage of androgen, showing that we are all made in the image and likeness of our Creator, Yahweh Yahweh. Now, Elohim is Yahweh's divine holistic title that Yahweh chose for himself, unlike that of Lord and Lord. And El in Hebrew theology, it means Yahweh. So there is a relationship between Yahweh and Elohim, Ea meaning Yahweh. When we turn our Bibles to so called John 5 poetry, the Savior of the Lord, when he came into his ministry, he said, I am come in my Father's name, and you receive me not. If another will let another come in his own name, him you will receive. From a natural standpoint, a natural child, when it is born into the world, it takes on the natural surname of its natural father. So when the father's surname is Smith Jones or Lewis, that child is automatically called Smith Jones or Lewis. Likewise, the Savior of the world, when he was born into the world, he took on that masculine portion of his heavenly father's name, which is Yah, and Shua meaning salvation. His name is Yah, Shua, meaning Yahweh is salvation or Yahweh is saving. And in Acts 1 12 it states, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved, saving in the name of Yeshua the Messiah and Yeshua the Messiah the Lord. Now let us consider for a moment if it was Jesus who said that he has come in his father's name. There is no resemblance between Jesus and Jehovah, neither is there any resemblance between Jesus and the Lord of Lord. And if you look into the etymology of these terms, You'll find that Lord comes from Adonai, comes from Lord, comes from Baal, which is the devil. God comes from God, comes from God, comes from God, which is also Satanic. Neither is there any resemblance between Jesus and Allah or Buddha or any other deity that you have on this earth. So truly it is Yahshua who said, I am coming my father's name. Taking that masculine portion from his heavenly father's name, which is Yah, and Shua meaning salvation. Let me turn your attention to this chart. This chart is called the Mosaic chart. And in this chart, Yahweh, which is pure spirit, is symbolized by a cloud. But Yahweh in his pure spirit state is not a cloud. We only use this cloud to depict Yahweh, seeing that the cloud has no reasonable shape and form. Just as this orange and fiery colored color extends from the edges of this chart, and everything on this chart abides within the orange and fiery colored color, so too in principle and in light manner does everything in the universe and the sum total of this creation abide within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh is the ultimate source, substance. Yahweh is the limit and bound to all things. It is within Yahweh, which is pure spirit, that we all live and move and have our being. As some of your poets have said, for we are Yahweh's offspring. Now Yahweh, knowing that man cannot receive of him or understand him, in his pure spirit state, purpose right to himself, to take on a super, incorporeal shape and form, that is, having the shape and form of a man, yet was all flesh and blood, that he entitled Yahweh out of him, which is the rule of himself. Now this great heavenly and holy being, Yahweh Elohim, 
is the archetype or the original pattern of the universe. It is he, Yahweh Elohim, who showed Moses in a vision how he is comprised in part, not in totality, of these nine divine principal attributes of Yahweh in an organized shape and form. Divine wisdom, divine knowledge, from divine intelligence. Divine love, divine justice, divine beauty, divine foundation, divine strength, and divine power. Now, after Yahweh had Moses to lead the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses on top of Mount Sinai, where he instantaneously transformed himself into this threefold, thoroughly furnished, tabernacle pattern or sanctuary, which consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a fort on the road. One is for the three compartments, but one tabernacle pattern. We will note in this first proof how everything in the universe is made and operates and is dictated according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern. And absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. Yahweh Allah also showed Moses how he created the heaven and the earth according to this divine tabernacle pattern and showed Moses the creation coming up by a side from Yahweh Allah could only be seen in divine visions and sometimes accompanied by a divine revelation as was given to the so-called Apostle John for the Isle of Patmos in the year 1896 in which he wrote in the so-called Book of St. John, chapter 1 Beginning at the first verse, it states, In the beginning was the world, and the world was with Yahweh, and the world was Yahweh. The same was in the beginning with Yahweh. All things were made by him, Yahweh Elohim. And without him, Yahweh Elohim, was not anything made that was made. In him was light, and the light was, and still is the light for the light of man. Finally, Yahweh Elohim manifested himself into the shape and form of man. That he entitled Yahshua the Messiah, whom the religious world wrongfully calls Jesus Christ. This is further verified in that same book of St. John, chapter 1, beginning at the 14th verse, which states, And the Word, Yahweh El, was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only person of the Father, full of grace and full of truth. Now, in this school, we have 10 primary constitutional aims and objectives to follow. One, to help you find and know Yahweh of Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Two, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah, without distinction of race or nationality, creed, sex, class, or color. Three, three, to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so called law of nature. And the powers of Jesus in man, for to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religion, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and applied science. Fifth, to escapade current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn how and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensation of ages. Seven, to discern and avoid being deceived by sensations of Eight, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Nine, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained. There is no other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved, saving in the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And ten, to inherit eternal life now, in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah, with the hope of the most glorification in the new world state. I will watch with this peace, and I will slow down this speak the truth. Morning, each and every one.
our, script, our scripture lesson this morning will be taken from the 40th chapter of the book of Isaiah. Reading to you the 40th chapter of the book of Isaiah. Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people, saint your Elohim. Speak ye comfortable to Jerusalem and cry unto her, that her warfare is accomplished and that her iniquity is pardoned. For she had received of Yahweh, she had received of Yahweh's hand double for all her sins. The voice of him that called, that cried to the wilderness, prepare ye the way of Yahweh, and make straight in the desert a highway, highway for all Elohim. Everybody shall be exalted and every mountain and hill shall be made low and the crooked shall be made straight and the rough places plain and the glory of Yahweh shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together for the mouth of Yahweh had spoken the voice said, Cry, and he said, What shall I cry? All flesh is grass. On all the willingness thereof is as the flower of the field. The grass withered, the flower faded, because the spirit of Yahweh put upon it. Surely the people is grass. The grass withered. The flower faded, but the word of Elohim shall stand forever. O Zion, that do not no tidings, get ye up into the high mountain, O Jerusalem, that do not no tidings, lift up thy voice with strength, lift it up, be not afraid. Sing unto the cities of Judah, behold your Elohim, behold Yahweh Elohim will come with strong hand, and his arm shall rule for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his work before him. He shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs with his arms, and carry them in, in his bosom, and shall gently lead those that are with strong. Who hath measured the waters in the hollow of his hand? And meted out the heavens, meted out heaven with a span, and comprehended the dust of the earth in a measure, and where the mountains in scales, and the hills in a balance, who had directed the spirit of Yahweh, or being his counselor, had taught him. With whom took he counsel, and who instructed him, and taught him in the path of judgment, and taught him knowledge, and showed to him the way of understanding. Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket, and are counted as a small as a small dust. Of the, of the balance. Behold, he taketh up the eyes as very little thing, as a very little thing. And Lebanon is not sufficient to burn, nor the beast thereof sufficient for a burnt offering. 
all nations before him are as nothing. And they continue to him less, and they come to sorry to him less than nothing and vanity. To whom then shall he liken Elohim? Or what likeness will he compare unto him? The workman melted a graven image, and the gold and the goldsmiths spreadeth it over with gold, and casteth silver chains. He that is not impoverished, that he hath no oblation, chooseth a tree that will not that will not rot. He seeketh unto him a cunning workman to prepare a graven image that shall not be moved. Have we not known? Have we not heard? Had it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundation of the earth? It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers, that stretcheth out the heavens as a curtain, and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in, that bringeth his princes to naught for nothing. He maketh the judges of the earth at vanity, yea, they shall not be planted, yea, they shall not be sworn, yea, their stock shall not take root in the earth, and he shall also grow upon them, and they shall wither, and the world shall take them away as trouble. To whom then will he like me, or shall I be equal, said the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high, and behold, who hath created these things, that bringeth out your host by number, he calleth them all by names, by the greatness of his might, for that he is shown in power, not one feeling. Why sayest thou, O Jacob, and speaketh thou, O Israel? My way is hid from Yahweh, and my judgment is passed over from my Elohim. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard, that the everlasting Elohim, Yahweh, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faith, and to them that have no mind. He increaseth strength. Even the youth, the youth shall faint, and the weary and the young men shall utterly faint, shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon Yahweh shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be real, and they shall walk and not be. Here ended Isaiah, the 40th chapter. Good day to each and every one of you. So find our discourse. We have shown you how the children of Israel who was living in Canaan's land at one time, and then they took there was a famine in Canaan's land, and they all had come down into Egypt to get food. And it so happened, see, because of the purpose of Yahweh, that they had a brother there 
in Egypt. Who at that time was a ruler, a great ruler. And after he made known himself to his brothers. He secured for them dwellings in Egypt. So they came down from Egypt and they ended up living. They came down from Canaan and sorry, and they ended up living in Egypt. Is that brother again? Show that. Mm -hmm. Brother, who the father of man is the deity. Just look in my mind. Let's double check it for me. He had he was given the coats of many colors. Let's double check that it's just not coming to mind. Jacob, uh, hmm? Shep, not Joseph. Joseph. Okay. So Joseph was the ruler down here by the Pharaoh. See, because his brother had sold him into slavery. Because of jealousy, because of jealousy, his brother, when they were living in Canaan's land, his brother sold him into slavery. So Joseph now is down here in Egypt, and the king had a dream or vision. As a result of that vision of seven years of a bountiful harvest and seven years of famine. So when the Joseph, Joseph instructed see, Pharaoh and his people, at the time of the bountiful harvest, to build bands, or be a house, as we call it, modern, and store the excess grain for when the, when the seven years of famine came. So when the seven years of famine came, all over the land there was famine. So that is how Joseph's brothers came down into Egypt. He hid himself from them. See? And by hiding himself, they did not know his identity. Eventually, he revealed himself to them. And they eventually began to live in Egypt as farmers. So that's how the children of Israel came up in Egypt. Then they multiplied in Egypt, as you have been taught. So much so that the and next Pharaoh, not the same Pharaoh, not the same Pharaoh who was favorable with Joseph, but another Pharaoh rose up who knew not Joseph. Now, when he looked outside and he saw that the children of Israel, the male children especially, 
put one of lines rapidly. She he called them midwives and he told them when the women is at the birthing stool, if you see a female child, what we call a girl child, let the child live. But if you see the child is a male child, kill it. But as we have been have read, the midwife did not kill the male children. So when Pharaoh saw those male children was alive, he called in the midwives. And he inquired of them why male children are still alive. So they gave an excuse saying, That the Hebrew women, she, they so like their birth by the time they look to kill them, the male children, the male children just was out of the womb. So what Pharaoh did, he instructed his own people, his men, to go and kill those Hebrew children. See, so we have here a point in time in the history of mankind. But all of this is part of the history of the world. See? We may not know that or understand it like that. Those children were killed and was thrown into the river. And the river obviously contains water. So when they were killed after that, when the the bodies go into the river, which is water, that's a barrier. See, when they were killed, the blood was spilled. The river having water, blood, water. And around that time, the time that Moses, the man, was, was born. Now remember now, it takes nine months or 40 lunar weeks for a child to be born. It's important for you to understand it. Because all of that is within the purpose of the earth. See? So here, so when his mother had been hit him for three months, and she could no longer hide him, she built him an ark of gold rushes, and dove it with slime on the pitch, and put the child there in. And she put his sister she, to look about to see what would happen to this child. So here she is and she's, and it, he's placed by the flood of the rivers, river Nile. So when Pharaoh's daughter and her maidens came up to him, and they saw the ark, they said, the ark. See, Moses is considered dead and buried in the ark. And then when they fetched the ark and they presented that ark of the rushes with the child in it to Pharaoh's daughter, she opened it on seeing the young child, the child cried. And she took that child up and out of the ark and she said, This is one of the Hebrews' children. Why did she say that? How did she know that that was one of the Hebrews' children? Someone will tell us that it's because he was, there was a particular knitted blanket. That's what the movie makers have said. And when they saw the blanket, they knew that it's a Hebrew. That's not the truth. See, we did circumcision last class. And in the last class, we showed you under the law of circumcision, the male child had to be circumcised on the eighth day of his birth. So that circumcision, the act of circumcision, will take some time to heal. So when they take the child up and they see the child, it's obvious they're going to see 
the circumcised child. And that is how they know that was the Hebrew's children. Not from a branch. So Pharaoh's daughter says, no, you see, she desired to mind the child as a whole. So Moses' law was paid money. Moses' mother was paid money to nurse her own child. So when he was weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast, he grew up in Pharaoh's household as a prince. So let us get the spirit, extract the spiritual meaning of what we was just what we had just read. See, because everything in you will read in the Bible. It's related to spiritual principles or precepts. So when the children, the male children were still, that's a death, they were buried in the water, the river. That's a death, a burial. When Moses was in the ark of the rushes, see, he was also considered symbolically dead and buried. So when he took him up and out of the ark, it is symbolizing the resurrection. So beginning at Moses, we see the principle of a death, a burial, and a resurrection. And remember I said it was in the third month of his birth. And a month given for a day, and a day given for a month, it was the principle of the third. So we see this principle beginning at Moses, a death, a burial, and the resurrection of the two also blood because when the children were still the blood was split so that's blood the water in the river blood water moses was born a goodly child pointing to the spirit in him so that's blood water spirit and it takes nine months or 40 weeks for a child to be born so we have but was spread for the death, burial, resurrection on the third day. See? The question is why? That's the question. No, it's, as I pointed out to you, it has become clear for you to see. see? So now, The purpose of Yahweh is laid down right here. All what they make it a big fuss about is laid down right here with the children of Israel, Moses and the children of Israel. And if we could understand Moses and the, the prophets, we could understand the purpose of Yahweh. And this happened way here with Moses and the children of Israel. So we get in that pattern of death, burial, resurrection on the third day, blood, water, spirit, water. Now the same pattern now, it repeated itself and will continue to repeat itself in this universe as long as this universe is in operation as we know it to be today. So we are admonished. Anytime we want to show somebody anything about the Creator, we must go to the law and we must go to the testimonies. So since I've shown you this here, then I have to show you it somewhere else. See? Bear in mind that the law is the first Bible to be back from Genesis. To Deuteronomy. And the testimony in the next 34 books of the Bible from Joshua to Malachi. Also, one must understand the words of the Holy Spirit in a body. Who is Yahshua? When he came in, when he was in the flesh, hear what he told the people back there, the Jewish nation back there. And we go to Matthew 5, 17 and 18, and hear what he told them. Because they did not understand what he was doing in his ministry. Just like they don't understand.
become the entire Bible. Just like all your religious leaders, she does not know what the things in the Bible really is pointing to. And in Matthew 5, 17 and 18, he told them, he said, you think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy the I am here to fulfill it. That also has presented itself as a problem in understanding, by way of understanding. When it is simply, you go to a good dictionary and you look up the meaning of the word fulfill. And you will see it is a direct opposite of the word establish. It's a direct opposite. See? Because fulfill means to complete something and to bring it to an end. Now what we need to also qualify that complete something and bring it to end. Truly the person who has to complete something means they have to start it too. It also draws to the fact that the one who said they're completing it is the one who had to start it. And if we can get that, we can start to see the scriptures open up in it itself towards our understanding, or we get into understanding through the gift of the Holy Spirit so that we see the pattern opening up itself to us. But the one, only the one who started can finish it. And why I say that? Because no Johnny come lately could finish something they knew nothing about because they didn't start it. So they could not know how the end of it is supposed to be. So that is just explaining it to you in a simple form. That is why the person who started is the one who could finish it. So when he's telling them, think not that come to destroy the law of the prophets, I'm not come to destroy but to fulfill it, to complete it and bring it to an end. That should tell us that he's the one who started. Simple as that. Because the only one who started, the only one who will know the purpose and what we are leading to, to bring it to an end. See? So here it is, that's in the law. So in the law we start with Moses. Why do we start with Moses? Because Yahweh, who is pure spirit, he made his ways known unto Moses and his acts unto the children of Israel. And all our life, we want to know God. We've been going from here to there, knocking all over the place, looking for the creator of the world, who we call Lord, God, whatever else. We want to know him. Why? Because he has put that in us that we might seek him, if even we may find after him and find him. See? See? You may ask seven. 24, 25, or something like that. Ask seven in a thing. Yes. Hmm? Acts 17, 24. Please read. Yahweh can make the world. No. You say Yahweh, he's the one that made the world, not your scientists. So that is why your scientists will mess it up. You'll always be theorizing. Yahweh is the one who made the world. Yeah. And all things therein. And everything, and all things, George Bible says, all things that is made in the world is he making. 
you will find out mankind is destroyed. And so they're creating an evolution of man and the environment. See? Yahweh that made the world and everything of all things in it. Read on. Seeing that he is ruler of heaven and earth. Now seeing that he, Yahweh is ruler of both heaven and what? Earth. He's a ruler. See? Read on. He dwelleth not in temples made with hands. No, he don't live. He dwelleth not in temples made with man's hands. In other words, he don't live in your physical buildings. See? These physical buildings that people erect and say they're going to communicate with the one they call God, who is the army, none of them. He don't live there. He, he will not be found there. See, it's hard to have to tell you the truth sometimes. But he's not in your church. He's not in your synagogues. He's not in your mosques. He's not in your temples. Whatever you might call your, your holy building, he don't live there. So why would he go somewhere to meet somebody who's not living there? That should make some sense in that. If you know someone is not living in a place, would you go there looking for that? Think about it. And you say you believe in the Bible and the scriptures. See? And I'm telling you that the one you call God is Yahweh Elohim, don't live in temples made with man's hands. Mm -hmm. Neither is worship. With Neither man's is he worship. Mm -hmm. With man's hands. With man's hands. As though he needed anything. As he needed anything. So he's telling you he's not worshipped with men's hands. So nothing that you can do with these hands is going to please him. Hmm? He's not worshipped with men's hands. As though he needed anything. As though he need anything. Have you ever seen the one you call God, who is Yahweh, the Elohim? Have you ever seen him spend the money for the tithes and the offering? I've said it, and I've said it many times. The day a preacher, a religious leader, see a hand coming down in the collection, she, that hand is going to get cut off. Because he knows, sure, that is not the hand of God. That is some one of them ushers taking the money out of the collection. See? He will hold on to that hand so tight. See? Because he knows that hand is taking his money. See? Because he knows that your creator is not worshiping men's hand as though he what? Need anything. So there's nothing you can bring to him and give him. Hmm? We don't. See, he gives us to all. See that he is the one who gives to all life, life and breath, and breath, and all things. So the life, the breath, the strength, you see, the health, the strength to get anything is he give it. Even the brain to operate the brain, he give you it. So what could you give him? when he's the one who's given us. Hmm? All the earth is his. See? We don't own anything. You might find there are those who just want to grab as much as they can grab. But we leave it, don't we? We don't. And have made of one man. And have your book, you see, your Bible has it, and has made of one man. The King James will have it, and has made of one blood. When he has, in your Bible says, and he has made of one man. Mm -hmm. All 
nations of men. All nations of men coming from one man. Mm -hmm. For to dwell on all the earth. For to dwell on all the earth. So tell me, where is your prejudice and your, dis and your discrimination coming from? Tell me, where is it coming from? Because if you understand that, that would get rid of all the wars of the world. That regardless how you perceive a person to look, all man is related. So where is it coming from? See, where are those evil thoughts coming from? from? By now, you should have an answer. Please read it. And have determined the times. And have determined the time. For appointed. Appointed. And the bones of their habitation. And their bones of their habitation. So Yahweh yeah, had determined the bones of everybody's what? Inhabitation. Mm -hmm. That they should seek him. What did he say? He put it in every, each and every one of us to seek him. So since he has put it in us to seek him, so it's easy for the satanic forces and spirit who understand that Yahweh yeah, has put it in, our, in us, in our spiritual DNA to seek him. So that satanic force or satanic spirit know we're going to be seeking him. So what he has done is just create all these traps and tell him, say, come here. You see, I'm living here. Come and do this and you'll end up with me in heaven. See? Remember just quite recently, I have told you about a situation that took place in where? Kenya? Is it Kenya I told you? All right. And at that time, I had reported that there were about 50 people, see, that they, some, they call it a cult, in some remote area in Kenya. And this pastor, see, had so influenced the people to starve themselves to death so they could meet Jesus very early. The last report I got is over 400 people going on to 500 and something people that they found grace for. See? and took the bodies who they could take out of these graves over 400 to 500 people. But this religious leader and his reporting that he told them, you see, that by April, see, Jesus was coming. So if they want to be in first in front to meet him, kill yourself quick by starvation. Hmm? So I do know what I'm saying. No, they are they are branding him all type of names and all that. And suddenly, suddenly the rest of the Christian religion is separating themselves from him. But he's preaching the same Lord, Lord, and Jesus. Just as they. See, show you that brainwashing, that programming. And it is easy to take it in because the, the leaders of the country, they supported that type of preaching. See, so it's easy for the preachers now 
because those in charge who we call whom we call so-called governments, they support it, of this. See, and when the people get to the extreme now, you hear all kind of negative words, but it's still based on the principle of what it is, on the Christianity. So we have what they call James Jones, we have what they call Waco, Waco, or whatever. We have the Kenyans, and we don't know what else we have. You see, but they all preach the, 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 what they call the Christian gospel. Right? And they all claim to have the Holy Spirit. You see? But Yahweh put into us a tiny hint. And then the devil keep these traps. But of course, remember, he dwelt it not in temples, but made with man's hands. So anybody telling you to come to this particular place and you can get God in whatever form is contrary to the scriptures. See? But it's supported by these governments all over the world. You see, in the Christian, see, in the Christian countries. See? So here it is. In the law, we have the death, the burial, and the resurrection being placed. So we go into prophecy now. And we get Jonah. See? And most people by now. Should have been able to know the whole thing about Jonah. So we see Jonah now was told to go to Nineveh. And instead of that, he was disobedient and went to Tarshish. The army caused a great tempest in the sea. The sailors, See, who was aboard that ship, they were afraid. So they threw all the luggage overboard to lighten the ship. Then they started to pray to the various idols and images who had no power to stop the tempest. Then they went on and they started to cut themselves, shed their own blood. In heaven. In other words, they try to peace every day that they knew. None had the power to stop the tempest. You see? So now, they found Jonah asleep, and Jonah had to declare to them the name of the Creator, because they did not know. They did not know who the creators, what the Creator's name was and who he was. So Jonah had to declare the name of Yahweh to them. And he also had to declare the power of Yahweh to them. That Yahweh is all powerful because he made everything. That's what we read just now in Acts of He made everything. So that tempest is, is the one who created that tempest that is on the sea. And why did he create it? They want to know because, well, you see, I was disobedient and uh, I didn't listen because he sent me to preach to Nineveh. And here am I going to tell you, I'm the one who put all of your life in what? In jeopardy. She said, What are we going to do with you? That they see me become unto what is in your control of all the earth. Because Yahweh is not going to give no peace. See? See? They didn't want to do that. And then Yahweh just ramped it up some more. And had no discussion after that. They were just thrown overboard. And he ended up in a fish's bed. 
And, he's, and, and when you read the book of Jonah, he said, in the belly of El Fira, salvation is of Yahweh. He said, who ever forsake Yahweh, forsake your own mercy. See? And that's why I preach it to you, so that you would not for what? Forsake your own mercy. Yes, we have been taught a lot of junk. See? You are made to believe a lot of things. And one would say, well, see, the one the man in Kenya, you know, we criticize him quite a lot for causing so much people's death by his words, by his influence upon them. But what about the others? Who's causing the spiritual death? of mankind by the same words and by the same influence. What about those? See, we could see the natural going on, you see, but what about the spiritual death? You see, that is being caused because of the disobedience of the spoken word of Yahweh. What about that? You see? So here it is, he's in the belly of hell. And he's crying out to Yahweh. See? So then Yahweh takes him to what? Nineveh. And in the morning of the third day, he spews Jonah out of the fish belly, or he resurrects Jonah. So Jonah goes through, he's considered dead and buried in the sea and in the fish belly. And he's resurrected out of the fish's belly on the third day. The sailors, they kill the they fish. Uh, they cut themselves. So when you cut yourself, blood will come out. So they shed their own blood. They see me in the water. Yahweh, who is spirit, Manifests in the tempest of the sea, blood, water, spirit. And Jonah preached to Nineveh for how long? 40 days and 40 nights. So we get it in the law, we get it in the prophets, the principle of death, burial, resurrection on the third day, blood, water, spirit, 40. See? So that's the law of the prophets. So you get the same thing when you have the blood. With Noah. The same thing. So the purpose of Yahweh keeps repeating it, what? Self. We found that at that time, and in the world, in the history of the world, you had a man called Noah, and he was a just man in the sight of Yahweh. So Yahweh told him, because he saw the wickedness that was being perpetrated by mankind on the face of the earth, that every imagination that Yahweh was speaking about, so that every imagination and intent of man heart was wicked and sinful continuously. She knew it wasn't stopping. And it repented Yahweh that he made man. You see? And you might say, well, okay, whatever your opinion is, it doesn't matter anyhow. You see, because there's something that matters. See, what has happened is the satanic angels that was cast out of Satan and his demons that was cast out of him got into the bodies of mankind. Which is responsible for why the, the thoughts and the intent of man heart was always sinful and, and, and wicked and evil continuously. You see? Because mankind had taken on inside of them those satanic spirits. 
No, you can leave it back there if you want to. Or we could come become real and see if it's happening now. See? And you be the judge of that. You be the judge and see if what was happening back there and worse is happening now. You be the judge. See? So since it repented Yahweh that he made man. Then he told Moses, no, not Moses, he told Jonah. He told Noah, sorry. Give me that in, in, in Genesis, the sixth chapter. Let's stop and come to mind. Mm -hmm. Give me the part where he told him his days will be how much? 600 years or something like that. And Yahweh said, and Yahweh said, My spirit shall not always strive. My spirit shall not always strive with man. For he is but flesh. For he is but flesh. Let his days be 120 years. Let his days be how long? 120. 120 years. Mm -hmm. Good. So then, in other words, Yahweh determined how long they should live. He's going to give them 120 years. That's the amount of days they have. See? And at the appointed time, you see, during that time after he spoke to, to Noah, he told Noah to build an ark. Hmm? So while they were getting on, however they were getting on, back there, Noah was building this ark. And he instructed Noah to build an ark with a upper deck, a middle deck, and a lower deck. So the ark is built one, two, three, just like the tabernacle, but one ark. But one door on the side, a skylight door. See? And when they appointed time, it must be dark and slime on the fish too. So it's going to be dark. So at the appointed time, he had all the animals going clean and unclean. The male is male and his wife, female. It was not, not two males and two, two females. It's male and his wife, female, because they had to replenish and repopulate the world after Yahweh destroyed the world by the flood. See? So there's a reason why Yahweh made the male and the wife, female. See? He didn't make no two men on the face of the earth or two women. Just what I say. So when the time came, see, it got down. The fountains of the deep broke up. The windows of heaven the telly was open and in blood. The people died in the blood. Just like how when Pharaoh killed the children of Israel, they were in the water and they died in the water. See, here it is. They, they were killed in the blood and the boys' bodies remained in the, in the water. So they went through a death and a burial. The ark is on top of the water, so that's a death, burial, what? resurrection, and eight souls in this ark. See? 
So we have the death, the burial, and the, and the, and the resurrection going on here with Noah and the flood. So we see this principle playing out itself. So they died and was buried. See the blood was spilled. Flood made the water. Yahweh, whose spirit closed the doors of the ark, blood, water, spirit. And how long it rained for? 40 days and 40 nights. So we still get it. Death, burial, resurrection, blood, water, spirit, what? 40. Going to the Lord and going to the prophet. Same thing happened to Jonah. See? So then, when he asked to the Messiah, who was walking the face of the earth, they asked him a very serious question. See, tell us, when shall the end be? And what is the sign of your coming? He answered and said, No sign shall be given to you for the sign of Jonah. As Jonah was three days and three nights in the heart of the heart of the earth, so shall the Son of Man be. Do you know the Mr. Sign? Because Yahshua the Messiah was three days and three nights in the heart of the earth, and they miss it. So every sign that the Creator gave to mankind, he missed it. See? So Yahshua came and fulfilled all of these principles of death, burial, resurrection on the third day, blood, water, spirit, body. And that was the sign of the world, the end of the world, and his coming. See? Okay, so he has come. This is what I want you to know. That truly Yahshua the Messiah has come. See? And the second coming they're talking about, you see, the coming they're talking about, it's a spiritual coming. It's Holy Spirit coming within our hearts and in our minds. It's not a physical coming. See, the devil is just destroying mankind based on this type of doctrine. Now, remember I told you, when going through this, I told you that, uh, or did I say, let me make sure I, I say it or I did not say. That when Moses was in the ark of the rushes, see, and when Pharaoh's daughter took him out and up and out, did I mention that he cried? I may not have. Because the book that you read now makes sure they mention that he cried. Let's get, get that in Exodus. The second chapter and the sixth verse. The book made sure they tell us that he cried. Do you have it? Exodus, the second chapter, and the sixth verse. And say, and when she had opened it, which is the ark, she saw the child, and behold, the baby went. See? And she had compassion on him, and said, this is one of the Hebrews, children. So that child is crying, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Now when you go now, she does in the law. And we take the scripture lesson, Go to Isaiah 40.
to entry. The voice of him. The voice of him. That cries in the wilderness. That cries in the wilderness. Prepare ye the way of Yah. Prepare the way of Yah. So now we find that there's one crying in the wilderness. Prophesy that this one is going to come crying in the wilderness. See? As a prophesy of him. Of one crying in the wilderness. No, who is he? So we have a man. I'm reading for you. I started with John 1 and started with the 6 verse. There was a man sent from Elohim whose name they have as John. So they're talking about the one who called John the Baptist, which is truly a canon, because there is no JD. The same came for a witness to be a witness of the light. So he come to be a what? Witness See, of the light. It was not that light. But was sent to be a witness of that light. That was the true light which lighted every man that coming into the world. So when somebody dies, we say that light is out. In other words, the spirit of the living Elohim has left the body. He was in the world and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of Elohim, even to them that believe on his name. which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, but of the will, nor of the will of man, but of Elohim. So this is not a fleshly birth. So that Holy Spirit takes over. See, that is the birth of the Holy Spirit. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory, as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bear witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I speak. He that cometh after me is preferred before me. For he was before me. And of his fullness, have all we have all we received the grace of the grace and 
and have all we receive and grace for grace. For the law was given to Moses, or the law was given by Moses. It was grace and truth coming from the actual Messiah. So if you have Jesus Christ, you see, and there was no Jesus back yet, still is none, that has taken away the sins of the world, you have no grace, and certainly you have no truth. So that is spiritual death, that is spiritual murder. Then your book said, the King James Version said, no man has seen God at any time, but the only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he had declared him. Well, that is not entirely correct. See, what your book says, what your Bible says, 18, 118. No man had seen the Father at any time. See, see, the Holy Name Bible says no one has seen the Father at any time. Now the Father who is Yahweh is pure spirit. No man has seen him at any time. But the one you call God who is Elohim, man has seen him. And they have described him. You know, and this is the record of John. See? When the Jews sent priests and Levites from the Jews to ask him, who art thou? So the, the priests and the Levites are asking John, who is he? Be, but he confessed and he denied not. When confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then art thou, Elias? And he said, I am not. Art thou that prophet? And he answered, No. Then said they unto him, Who art thou, that he may give an answer to them that sent us? What says thou of thyself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of Yah, as the prophet Isaiah has spoken. So here it is. If you, if you take in the trend of thought, we have Moses as a baby crying. Is that correct? Good. Then you have Isaiah prophesying of the voice crying in the wilderness. Then John the Baptist said, I am the voice crying in the what? Wilderness. So you see, when you go back to Moses and you go to the prophets, you see you're picking up this thing. You see? About that voice crying in the wilderness. So when the actual Messiah comes in, he has to cry because the law and the prophets and the fulfillment must show that cry. So when he comes in, then he goes to the garden of Gethsemane and he wept. Huh? So somebody might theorize that in all kind of way. What I am trying to show you is whatever happens in the law must happen in the prophecy and it must be fulfilled by Yahshua the Messiah. And that's what he keeps telling them. Everything that is written in the law and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning him, he must complete it and bring it to what? end. See? So now we were talking about also, see? So that is why he has to come in and he must die. He must be buried and he must resurrect on the third day. So that is why when he comes in, he must be baptized. Why he must be baptized?
Because when the children of Israel came out, you see, and they came towards the Red Sea, then the Red Sea, when he stretched out his rod, then the Red Sea back. Huh? Give me first Corinthians, what? That's the 10th chapter. Let's get it from there. Mm-hmm. So the Apostle Paul is telling them, Moreover, brethren, or once again, brethren, I will not that you should be ignorant. I will not that you should be ignorant. Now, that ignorant means a lack of knowledge and understanding. Read on. How that all our fathers, see, because all our forefathers were under the cloud, were under the cloud. Mm-hmm. and all passed through the sea, and they all came past through this red sea here. Mm-hmm. And were all baptized unto Moses. And they were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. In the cloud and in the sea. See? In Tiscan, you baptism didn't start in your church. It didn't start in nobody's church. It didn't start with no religion either. There was no religion back there when it had baptism. So this is the children of Israel coming to the Red Sea. But when you read it, when they came to the Red Sea, see, when Moses on his road over the sea, the sea heaped up in its strength, the east wind come and dried around, and they went five of breaths in the midst of the sea, and the the waters were the wall unto them, forming like a little mountain, and they passed through the sea, and they did not get wet. They were not physically wet when they went through the Red Sea. But here the Apostle Paul is saying they were all baptized in the cloud and in the sea. Is that right? Hmm? That's what the Apostle Paul is telling them. See? And what we need to do is make a step back because we think we know everything. We are programmed. Anytime we hear baptism, we think water. That's what happens to us. See, the pre programming that we have, that we so know the meaning of words. That as soon as we hear baptism, we say water. See, when these children of Israel were thrown into the river and they died, that's a baptism. Because baptism means immersion. Anything that covers you over. You are immersed in it. If you have a set of straw, a set of feathers, or anything that you could cover yourself over in, you baptize in it. Even when you before you go to sleep, if you cover yourself over, that's a baptism. You immerse under the sheet. That's a baptism when you're not wet. See, it's how we apply it. So that's why the Apostle Paul would tell them to all baptize unto Moses in the cloud, because they were immersed in the cloud. You see? So they were baptized in the cloud while they were going through the sea. So the cloud was covered them, they were in the cloud. See? So they were all baptized and they were not wet. So baptism means a what? Immersion. See? It's an immersion. So when
give me So when Joshua the Messiah came into his ministry, then he has to go to John Ward the Baptist. But before he gets there, let's read some more. Okay, we stopped at the and said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. See? Make straight the way of Yahweh, as he said to the prophet Isaiah. See, so we read on to the 24 verses. And this, they which went, and they which were sent to move of the Pharisees. And they asked him and said unto him, Why baptizest thou, if thou be not that Messiah, nor Elias, neither that prophet? And he said, The one who called John, who you cannot answer them, saying, I baptize with water. You see? But there standeth one among you. So he's Expressly telling them the job that he's given to do. He said, I am doing water baptism. I indeed baptize with water. But he that standeth, but there standeth one among you. Mm -hmm. Who do you know? That? Who do you know? See? He it is. He it is. Who coming after me? Who coming after me? To pull before, to pull before me. Whose shoes latches I'm not worthy to not good it to unloose. Mm-hmm. You don't. These things were said. These things were done in Betabar. Betabara. 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 Well, you know, I may not be too good at these words. Beyond Jordan. Beth Abara, beyond Jordan, where John was, where John was baptizing, reader. The next day, John said Yahshua. The next day, John said Yahshua coming unto him and said, and said, Behold the Lamb of Yahweh. He said, Behold the Lamb of Yahweh, which taketh away the sin of which the taken away the sins of the world. This is full of. So John pointed him out to be the Lamb of Yahweh that doing what? Take it away the you see, we just passed this tree. You see, and when I say we are talking about people looking for who they call God or righteousness. If you read it and you take your time, mm -hmm, you call him the one you call John the Baptist, who's your canna, punch him out and say, Behold the Lamb of Yahweh which taketh away the sins of the world. Right there. Right there you're going to find out who falls and who's not false. Because you want him out to be the Lamb of Yahweh that taketh away the sins of the what? World. So the question is, for you today, has he taken away the sins of the world? So when you answer that, you're going to find out if you, what you really believe in is correct. Because if you're going around begging for sin's forgiveness, then you're saying he did not take away the sins of the what? The world. So see where that is? Because John said he's going to be taking away the sins of the what? The world. And the world means everybody in the world, not just the Jews alone. He's coming to take away the sins of all mankind. So if you leave yourself out and run into some preacher or some preacher somewhere else, they can't do it. See? 
they have no understanding of it. See, because sins are spiritual. See? Sins are spiritual, remember that. We know. This is he of whom I said. This is who he of whom I said. After me cometh a man. After me cometh a man. Who was preferred before me. Who is before preferred before me. For he was before me. For he was before me. And mm -hmm. I knew him not. And I knew him not. But that he should be made manifest to Israel. That but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore am I come in losing with water. Therefore come. Therefore come I, therefore am I come baptizing in what? He said he come baptizing in water. He didn't say Yahshua come baptizing in water. We on. And John bore record saying. And John bore record saying. I saw the spirit descending from heaven. I saw the spirit descending from heaven. Like a dove. Mm -hmm. Like a dove. And it abode upon him. And it abode upon him. And I knew him not. And I knew him not. But he that sent me to immerse with water. But he that sent me to baptize or immerse in water. The same said unto me. The same said unto me. Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit. Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit. Descending. Descending. And remaining on him. And remaining on him. The same is he which. The same is he, which baptized with the Holy Ghost. Hmm. That's what the one who sent him. So he was sent especially to baptize the water. Is that correct? And the one who sent him to baptize in water said, when you see the spirit descending on him, you see, as a dove, then you would know this is he who is to be baptized, to be baptizing people with the Holy Spirit. So John is pointing out that his ministry is a water baptism ministry. His ministry is a ministry of repentance, forgiveness of sin, and water baptism. See, and Yashua's ministry is the ministry of the baptism of the what? Holy Spirit. So those who Hold on to, to, uh, to John's water baptism. See? Let us see what it means. All right, let us finish reading this all. And I saw and bear record that this is the son of Elohim. I want to pick this up. I want to pick this up also in Matthew. Give me the third chapter of Matthew. Third chapter of Matthew. Mm -hmm. Hmm? Yeah, I want to take it from the start because it's going to show what was just reading just now. In those days, in those days, came John the Immerser. Came John the Immerser, or what you would call John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, repent and say, repent ye, repent ye, for the kingdom, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah. But that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah saying the voice of one crying the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Prepare ye the way of God. See, so it must come coming down to the Lord the prophet. See the voice that cried in the wilderness. For Moses was the also the voice that cried in the what? Wilderness. Uh-huh. Prepare ye the way of Yahweh. Prepare ye the way of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. Make straight in the deserts. Make straight in the desert. A highway for our Elohim. A highway for our Elohim. 
And the same John had his raiment of camel hair. And the same John had his raiment of camel hair. And a leather girdle about, about his loins. And his food was locust. And his food and meat was locust and wild honey. Then went out to him. Jerusalem, then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea. And all Judea. On all the regions around Jordan, and they were baptized of him in the Jordan River, confessing their what? Sins. So we see that this is his ministry. The repentance, confession of sins, and water baptism. See? But remember, we have already read the same one you call John the Baptist. Eh? The one who sent him, sent him to baptize with water. See, and said the one, see, who he see the dove ascending on him. That's the one who's going to be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Read on. Okay. Drop down to eleven verse. I indeed baptize you with water. So John the Baptist said, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. Unto repentance. But, he that cometh after but he that cometh after me is mightier than, is mightier than I. Whose shoes are not worthy. Whose shoes are not worthy to be earth. He shall immerse you with the Holy Spirit. He shall baptize you, immerse you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And with fire. You see that they can the religious world cannot. You see, they can understand it and they can't play with it. See, so what they have done is go back and give the people John's water baptism of repentance and forgiveness to sin. See? Because if they, if they try to attempt anything to baptize anybody in fire, you know, to the authorities which has put them away. So they know they can't play with that. And then another thing, a lot of people is not going to stand up with all the belief system they have in there to let nobody but them. Mm -hmm. So John is telling you that the Ashton Messiah is going to baptize with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Mm -hmm. Whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly push his floor and gather his wheat into the garden. But he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. That is hell. 13 verse. Then cometh Yashua from Galilee. Now then cometh Yashua from Galilee. To Jordan. To Jordan. To Jordan. Sorry. Then cometh Yashua from Galilee. To Jordan unto John mm -hmm. to be immersed of him. To be immersed or baptized of him. But John forbade him saying. But John forbade him saying, I have need to be a I have need to be baptized of thee, and, and come down to me. Mm -hmm. And Yahshua answered said and unto him. Yahshua answered and said unto him, Permitted it suffer it to be so now, John. For thus it becometh For thus it becometh us, John. To fulfill all righteousness. To fulfill all righteousness. What is the us? It becomes the Holy Spirit in John, who the tell is John, and the Holy Spirit in Yahshua to what to fulfill what? All righteousness. And what is the meaning of fulfill? To complete it and to bring it to an end. See, so this is the, the, what is taking place here. Yahshua the Messiah is fulfilling everything that has taken place with Moses and the prophets. So this water baptism, that is why he had to show up at John's water what? baptism to complete it, to move it out of the way, to fulfill it. See? And Yahshua, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. And though the heavens were open unto him, and he saw the spirit of Elohim descending like a dove, and lightning upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved son, 
in whom I'm well pleased. Now, I have never heard anybody say, when they got baptized, water baptized, after confessing themselves under this dispensation, because remember, we are in the dispensation of grace or the dispensation of the Holy Spirit, not the natural. So I've never heard anybody in no religion at all that does, whether they call it baptism, whether they call it christening or whatever, you see, whatever name they might call it, you see, I've never heard anyone say that they saw the Holy Spirit ascend, descend on them. I have none of them have said they received the gift of the what? Holy Spirit. If I tell you the truth, it might be just a little too hard for you to take on. See? If he was a dry devil, and they soak you in the water in the pool or the river or the pond or the sea or the river. You just go down a dry devil and you come up a what? A wet one. I just gonna tell you as it is. See, because water cannot wash away your what? Sins. And the sweet thing about it, you hear some people singing a, a song, what can wash away my sins? Only the blood. The same only the blood, but they're going to put itself in water. So only the blood, you know, but they're going to put itself in what? Physical, natural water. See, water cannot wash away what? Sins. Sins is spiritual, water is natural. And you can't even get clean water today in the world. It's so polluted, full of chemicals. See? So even that and all, if you even try that, you can't pull yourself the water in clean. Whether the sea with the river or the pond or wherever it is, it's still unclean. So one would tell me, she answered Yahshua Messiah, death, burial, and resurrection. Give me the great commission. I think that is Matthew the 26th chapter. He said they would say that they got the great commission. Hmm? Yeah, Matthew 28, 19. Give me from the 18 verse. And Yahshua came and spake unto them. So now, after Yahshua's death, there were resurrection, and the appointment of the Holy Spirit, Yahshua came and spake unto his disciples, saying, all power is given unto me. Not summon. He said, all power is given unto me. In heaven. In heaven. And in earth. So he's not sharing power with Jesus or anybody else. See? It's only one half the power. See, all power, Yahshua said, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Not some. Mm hmm Go therefore. So he's telling his disciples, go ye therefore and teach people to pray. Huh? Have them have long prayers and saying. He said, go ye therefore and teach what? All nations. That is why this is a school and it is not a church to teach you. Teach all nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father. Baptizing or immersing them in the name of the Father. Is the name of the Father water? We can read English. Say, baptize them or immerse them in the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Is that water? And of the Holy Spirit. Immerse the heart and immerse the mind. Teach them. Hmm? Hmm. Teaching them to observe all things. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever, whatsoever I have commanded you. And 
the whole earth. Teaching them to observe all things that Yahshua the Messiah had commanded them. The, the Messiah commanded anybody in this dispensation, or they become command their, their, their apostles to go and preach the law of Moses. Huh? Did he teach them that? Did he command them that? Commanding them to telling them to observe, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And what did he command them? He said, love me one another as I have what? Love you. Because love is the fulfillment of the commandments. All of the 613 laws is broken down in this one thing. And truly, even the natural law is broken down by that same one thing. See, if you don't harm people, do any harm to people, you obey the, even the natural law. See? Then you're free. Because you're not harming anybody in no form. See, every other thing is freedom. But that's not what they teach you. Everybody wants to control mankind. Because they, they want power. But if you're not hurting anybody, you're not doing any damage to anybody, that is even the fulfillment of what they call common law. Because that comes from divine, that divine law. And no law is greater than divine law. So all these statutes and things they make it, there are no real law. There's mankind exercising control and power over an ex man. See? And what I'm saying is you to have the love of Yahweh in you. Those kind of laws they're making in the world, regardless of here, here or everywhere, have no power over you. Because you're hurting nobody, you don't go damaging nobody's property, you're doing anybody no ill. That's the same law we just talked about. Teaching them to observe all things that I've commanded you. See? And though I'm not sure. He said, Lo, I am up above the sun, moon, and stars. And you have to pray and look up to me. Get down on your knees and make love to long for us. See? And try for me to hear you. He said, And lo, I am what? With you, With you always. Even unto, the end. Even unto the end of the world. What does he mean by with them? Because he promised to be with them and in them. See, that's the promise for him to be in us. For Yahshua in you is your only hope of glory. Give me that scripture where they did it. Yahshua in you is your only hope of glory. Not on you, eh? not lying down on top of you. Not some kind of shadow around you. That's the Holy Spirit in one. See? Colossians 127. Colossians 127. Please read. Let me get it. 
even the mystery. Hold, hold it, hold it. The 26 one seven. Yes, 26. I wanted to get the continuation of that. Wherefore, I am made a minister. Okay, all right, go ahead. Start, start from the inside. Even the mystery. Even the mystery. Which have been hid from ages. Which have been hid from ages. And from generations. And from generations. But now is made manifest to the sons. But now is manifest. Now was made manifest to his sons. To whom Yahweh would make known. To whom Yahweh Elohim will make known. What is the richest of the glory of his mystery? What is the richest of the glory of his might, majesty? Among the nations. Among the Gentiles or the nations. Which is the Messiah in you? Which is the Messiah where? In you. No, you didn't read that. Now I have in the King James Version saying, which is the Christ in you? You have the Messiah in you. Go ahead. The hope of glory. The hope of glory. So where he has to be? In us. Not above the sun, moon, and skies. She that is the gift of the Holy Spirit. She that came on the day of Pentecost, the Messiah, the spirit of the living Messiah in them, which is the Holy Spirit. The Messiah in you is the only hope of glory. Let me just get uh, Romans 6 and 3. I want you to understand what baptism really means in this dispensation. And it didn't mean it the same in the dispensation of the Lord. Mm -hmm. No, ye not. No, ye not. That so many of us as were baptized into Yeshua. That so many of us that are baptized, that was baptized into the Messiah. Were baptized into his death. Was baptized into his death. So all the time these baptisms were going on in the Lord and the prophets, the people were being baptized into his death. See? Give me collections 2 and 12. See? In preparation for his death. Why? Because in Adam all die. So John the Baptist, or the one you call John the Baptist, who is your canon, becomes the spiritual undertaker. So all mankind died in Adam. So John the Baptist come now and he's preaching repentance, forgiveness of sin, and water baptism because he's burying them spiritually under the dispensation of the Lord. Read on. Bury with him by baptism. So now, very after the dispensation of the Lord, that's how you could be said, buried with him in what? In baptism. So when he was back, when he was baptized and we were baptized, and those that were under the law were baptized, they were all baptized or buried in him with in baptism. Read on. Wherein also you are risen with him. Wherefore also we are we are we are risen with him. Through the faith of the operation of Yahweh. Through the faith. So if you don't have the faith in the operation of Yahweh, forget it. Through the faith of the operation of Yahweh. Who had raised Yahshua from the dead? See? So all those baptisms or burials, see, that's how they were planted. The Jews were planted into his death. Hmm? So now after his death, burial, resurrection now. You're born of the Holy Spirit, he said, I'm not going to tell his disciples, go be careful into all the world. Teach all nations, now the baptism is a spiritual baptism. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Spirit. Teaching them to observe all things that I've commanded you. And know I am what? With you or in you always, 
even unto the end of the age or the world. See? To me, first Corinthians 12 and 13. Please read. For by one spirit. For by one spirit, this is the true baptism in this dispensation. For by one spirit. Are we all baptized into one body? Are we all baptized into one body? It's a spiritual baptism. Uh -huh. Whether we be Jews or Greeks. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles, bond or free. Mm -hmm. And have been all made to drink into one spirit. And has been all made to drink into that one spirit. Now, what we, do we mean by drink into the spirit? Now, you have natural eating and drinking to tell you about spiritual eating and drinking. See? So, when you hear words, you see, it says in your Bible that the ears taste words just like the tongue tastes food. See? There are words you will hear you don't like it and you spit it out of your heart and mind. See? So that eating and drinking is what spiritually. So when the gospel is preached to you or when the truth is presented to you, if you have the spirit to receive it, to understand it, then you're eating and drinking spiritually. And if your spirit rejects it, well, you don't have it. See? Read on. That's it. Read it over again one more time. For so by one spirit, are we all baptized or immersed into one body? Yes. And that one body is Yahshua. Mm -hmm. Whether we be Jews or Greeks. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles or Greek. Whether we be born or free. Whether we be born or free. And have been all made to drink into We one have spirit. all been made to drink out of that one spirit. So the gospel has to be preached to all nations. Give me Ephesians 4 and 5. Can you go up a little bit? There's one body. There's one body. And one spirit. No. See? Paul in Ephesians says there's only one body. And there's only one spirit. So is there no God the Father, God, God the Son body, and God the Holy Spirit body? There's one body. And there is no three spirits either. There is no God the Father Spirit, God the Son Spirit, and God the Holy Spirit Spirit. There is one body and there is one spirit. Mm -hmm. Even as you are called. Even as you are called in one hope of your calling. One Elohim. One Elohim. One faith. One faith. One emotion. One emotion. One baptism. And that is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That even John the Baptist tell you, he is to baptize with the Holy Spirit and with fire. So sometimes the words that are said to you do burn you up. It do hurt your feelings, but that's the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So it's that quenching, that fire, see, that burn away the ignorance that we have inside of us. Because at first when we started here, we want to reject it. That's why I say, do your research Go back and get your Bible verses and see how the whole law of prophecy what fulfillment and see Yahshua the Messiah fulfilling it. And all the things that you're doing under this dispensation that was under the dispensation of the law that tells you you do not have the Holy Spirit and your leaders certainly don't have it. 
because they will not teach you the things that was under the law for the things that are under the spirit. See? On the back. Okay. Okay. With these true words, I say hallelujah. You have a good day and stay safe.